Now that you've learned how to create and format tables, you have access to many tools that will help Thomas to quickly organize and manage the sales data. Next, you will learn how to resize a table and how to quickly summarize your data. You will also learn how to clean your data by removing duplicates. After you create a table in Excel, there are many ways that you can easily add or remove table rows and columns. Let's see how you perform these actions. You can add rows at the bottom of the table by simply selecting any cell immediately below the table and start typing your data. When you're done, you can press Enter or Tab or select a cell outside of the table and Excel automatically expands the table to include the new row. The new row will include any formulas that are used in the table. Similarly, if you select a cell immediately to the right of a table and enter data, Excel automatically expands the table to include the new column. This functionality is called Table Auto Expansion. It is one of Excel's dynamic elements. For example, if you had created a chart based on the table, when new information is added, it means that the information will automatically appear in the chart. In most situations, this is a positive, but you can switch it off if you wish. You can control the table auto expansion behavior by clicking on the Control Autocorrect Options button that appears next to added row or column and selecting the appropriate option. If you select the Undo Table Auto Expansion, it removes the column or row from the table. But the data you entered remains and the Autocorrect Options button is still displayed, allowing you to select Redo Table Auto Expansion. Now, if you select the Control Autocorrect options, it launches the Autocorrect dialog box where, on the Auto Format as you type tab, you can set your preferences for automatically including new rows and columns in tables and automatically filling formulas in tables. And if you select Stop Automatically Expanding Tables after clicking the Autocorrect Options button, the Autocorrect Options button is no longer visible when you're working on your tables. To open the autocorrect dialog box, just click File, then Options, and then select the Proofing category in the Excel Options dialog box and click Autocorrect Options. Now let's see how you can delete rows and columns. You can delete rows or columns by clicking Home, then Delete, then selecting either Delete Table Rows or Delete Table Columns. You can also adjust the size of your table by clicking Table Design, then Resize Table. This action opens the Resize Table dialog box, where you can define the new range of your table. Keep in mind that the headers must remain in the same row, and the resulting table range must overlap the original table range. Finally, you can add or remove rows and columns by right-clicking a cell in the table and selecting from the available options in the menu. You probably remember that we discussed earlier in the lesson that you can add a total row to your tables by clicking the Total Row checkbox in the Table Style Options group of the Table Design Contextual tab. Now we will explore some of the functions that are available in this row to help Thomas analyze and summarize WestCal sales data. When you select any cell in the Total Row, it displays the Total Row drop-down arrow, which provides function options for calculating the total for that particular column. You can select from all the Excel functions for total row calculations by selecting More Functions from the Total Row Cell drop-down menu. This opens the Insert Function dialog box. If you want, you can also count the number of salespeople in your table. However, you should note that the functions that you select are not necessarily the functions that are used to display the value. In this example, if we select cell E15, the sum of the weekly goal column, we will see in the formula bar that the function used is actually subtotal. Subtotal functions are used to perform calculations on only subsets of data within a range or table. In this case, it is particularly useful to display the table total values when filters are applied to the table. Now let's cover an example in which a filter has been applied to hide several of the sales representatives. In this case, the results in the total row only reflect the data that is visible after the filter is applied. However, if you prefer, you can manually enter functions in the total row cells. You can set the weekly goal column total to be a true sum function, showing the total for all rows, while the weekly sales column remains a subtotal function, only showing the total for the rows that are not hidden. Now that you have seen how the subtotal function is used in the total row, let's cover some more detail on its syntax and arguments. You use function underscore num argument to define other functions that you would like to use to calculate subtotals. Functions are called using numeric values of 1 to 11 when including hidden values and 101 to 111 when excluding them. 
hover over subtotal and mention that this function is put in automatically in a table because it works well with filters. It's also a function that you can use anywhere else in the worksheet. Hover over the number and mention that this decides the function used to generate the subtotal. For example, 2 is count and 9 is sum, but the screen tip help when you're typing the formula will give a list of these to choose from. Notice that if you choose 9 here, it will sum using only the visible data, but if you use 109, it will sum and include the hidden data. However, if the subtotal is used on a block of filtered data, it will also focus on the visible data regardless of which version you choose. Hover over the ref1. This is where you indicate the cells, range, or column that you want to subtotal. If you're using subtotal in a table, the table column names will have to be enclosed in square brackets so that the formula knows it is working with the columns and not the individual cells. Each value calls a function in the function underscore num argument. For example, value 1 calls the average function, including hidden values in the calculation. In contrast, value 101 also calls the average function, but excluding hidden values in the calculation. We've provided a table that tells you which value calls which function in the function underscore num argument. It is available as a reading material right after this video. The reference arguments, ref1, ref2, etc., identify the ranges that you want to subtotal. Now let's think about this scenario. What if the sales figures that Westcal gave Thomas contains duplicate values? He should be able to identify and remove these values accurately. That's when another important Excel tool comes in, remove duplicates. It is true that duplicate values in data can be a common occurrence, especially in large data sets where data has originated from multiple sources, and they can be difficult to identify when dealing with many columns and rows. It is important, however, to identify and remove duplicates from your data to ensure accuracy and that your analyses are correct. While there are many strategies for identifying and removing duplicate data, Excel has a built-in function to remove duplicate values from tables or ranges that can be very effective. Let's look at how Thomas can use the Remove Duplicates function. Click anywhere inside of your table, then click Table, Design, Remove Duplicates. You can also access this function by clicking Data, then Remove Duplicates when working with ranges. These actions will display the Remove Duplicates dialog box. Now you can select the columns that contain the duplicates that you would like to remove. Please note that by default, all of the columns in the table will be selected. Make sure you use caution when selecting only some of the columns, as it may create a situation where you can unintentionally delete data that is not a duplicate. Sometimes you may have more than one instance of a value in the data set, but only two of the rows are identical across all of the columns. You should be extra careful whenever you are removing duplicates and using only some of the columns to define them. After you select the columns, click OK in the Remove Duplicates dialog box. Any duplicate value that is found is then removed. An information box appears that informs you of the number of duplicate values found and how many unique values remain.